Hey, I'm Bishop Leonard Scott, and this is Gospel Gems. Hey, we're here. <laughs> hey, how are you? Doing good, doing good. It's it a is, pleasure to meet you. Yes, yeah, good to meet you, Whitney. And uh, so, uh, who is Whitney J? Oh, goodness. Whitney J is just a woman that's trying to honor God with her life. I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, I'm an author, speaker. I also had a radio show, but me at my core, I'm a mom, mm -hmm. I'm an educator, and I'm a believer. Wow. That's who Whitney J is. All right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your radio show. Who, who, who are some of the people that you had on, or, or what oh, was the gist goodness. of it? I just, it was the honor of my life to host the She Hills Radio Show on Awesome Got Radio, based here in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I had all kinds of people that would come. So the format of my show was that I gave a word the first half and then an interview the second half. So I had singers that came, I had authors, I had people that just had a story to share. And the focus was just true healing, true raw transparency, and just people sharing how God has healed them. Mm -hmm. um, my son Quincy actually was the um, producer of my show. At just oh, wow. 11 years old, he started producing my Goodness. show. And it was just an amazing time. I cannot wait to get back to it. Wow. 11 years old. 11, yes. God will use your kids if you pray. Uh, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, it was great. And it was such a, a cool moment for us, um, t for me to learn to take direction from my son. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you think it should be the other way around, but God really equipped him to be able to lead me through my show. And wow. it was just an amazing experience. Yeah. And so you're a singer also. Yes, yes. Tell us about your single. So I have um, Break Me is my song. Break Me. Wow. Yes, it was quite <laughs> a journey. Um, I was not singing at the time that Break Me came about. I was still doing my radio show. I was promoting my book and speaking. I was not singing. Singing was a childhood dream that I had let die. And I just assumed that that was just something for the car ride. And, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. for me to sing and minister to people in that way. And I would just remember being home and I was writing. I like to write poetry. Mm -hmm. And I started writing what I thought was going to be a poem, and then I heard the melody. Wow. And okay. I was really taken aback because I was not a singer. And I kept saying to God, I'm not a singer. I have friends that sing, so maybe the song is for them. And right. he said, no, this is your song. And don't ever tell me what you are or are not. Mm -hmm. I define who you are, and you are a singer. And so from there, I took vocal lessons with the amazing Nell Ganey. And Break Me came about about a year and a half after I wrote it. I was able to work uh, with Delaney Land Music, which was owned by Todd Delaney, and they did the production side of my song. But mm -hmm. Break Me came out, and um, the heart of the song is a surrender. The chorus just says, if you've got to break me to make me, then it is well with me. Uh -huh. It's me crying out to God and saying, I may not understand your ways. I may not even like them sometimes, <laughs> but I trust you. Yes. And so whatever you're requiring of me, my answer is still yes. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the program. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming events. Your support drives exposure for upcoming gospel artists. So thanks and let's get back to the show. You're an author. Yes, I am. I wrote a book called The Pain is Real But the Promise is Eternal, What to Do When God's Will Hurts. Mm -hmm. And I wrote very candidly about trusting God after tragedy. Um, I lost my husband. Um, when I was 25, I became a widow wow. and a single mom. My husband died from a rare disease and my sons were five and two. My two year old had just been diagnosed with autism and it just was such a difficult time. And prior to that, I believed that if you just lived right and you just trusted God, that these kind of things wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so when it did, when the worst case scenario did happen, God took me on a journey of healing and really understanding what his will means and mm -hmm. that our relationship with God is not this overly romanticized relationship that we see in the movies. It's very layered. It's, it's difficult at times, but he's always there. Yeah. And so he led me to heal through writing, which was truly um, an experience I'll never forget. Yeah. So right now, oh, you've been through a lot. Yes. Just, just to be a, a young woman. Yes. What, what is the Lord dealing with you with right now in this season? Oh my goodness, in this season, it is definitely confidence to walk into the rooms that he's called me to go into. Mm -hmm. um, I'm such a thinker and I'm an educator by day. So everything is planned, everything is meticulous. And 
God in this season has allowed me to walk into opportunities that I never felt that I deserved or that I was qualified for. Even sitting with you right now, I was like, are you sure me? Am I enough? And God is saying to me, you are everything I've created you to be and I don't create mess. Wow. Right? It can get messy at times, but I don't create mess. And he's really charging me to boldly walk through the doors that he said, even if I'm afraid, it's okay, right? We're human, yeah. but to never shrink back. Never to never right. think my voice is not enough, whether he uses my voice in song, in speaking, in writing, however he gives me to give what he, you know, to serve the people, to never shrink back from it. So this, in this season, I'm stepping into who Whitney J truly is. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm meeting myself for the first time, which can be kind of uncomfortable, right? But at the same time, it's beautiful because all of those things, and there are so many other things that have happened, they oh. didn't break me. They molded me into who God has called me to be. And for that, I'm thankful. Wow. wow. So I'm just moving. Wherever he moving. says go, I'm going. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. So tell me, now, do you work with a local church in Yes, the area? I do. Messiah Community Church is based in Ricefordstown, Maryland. Okay. I love it there. What, what, are, what are you, are you plugged in real good? Or? So I serve in the um, children's ministry. Cool. So wow. I'm, like I said, my first profession was being an educator. And so mm -hmm. I've been super excited to just continue to pour into kids as much as I can. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That is so needed. Uh, and absolutely, and those, more than ever. Yeah, yeah. Our kids need us. I um, primarily work in special education. So I work with students with um, disabilities. And it's just amazing to see God use them in mighty ways. I think of my own children and how he's used them. My youngest son has autism and there's no limits with God. There's absolutely no limits. And right. so it's important for us to pour into our kids because they're getting poured into all the time. Right, right. So we have to make yeah. sure that we are also pouring some of God into them and the word of God and the yeah. posture of God into them because the influence that's around them is troubling. Right, right. So it's not an easy call, but a necessary one. Yeah. And more than just on Sunday. You know? Absolutely. Sunday is not enough. <laughs> it's not. By the time I watch the Ravens game that night, Sunday has worn off. Right. So I need, you know, God all day. And our kids need to be exposed to the realities of a walk with God. We can't continue to show them. And even just believers in general, we can't continue to put together this picture perfect Sunday performance. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest about what a true relationship with God looks like. Yeah. And yeah. how complicated it can be. Wow. So tr more, the more transparency, the better. Yeah. So who are some of the people that have impacted your life, influenced you? Uh, oh, goodness, there's so many. Um, the first person that came to mind is actually my mother-in-law. Her mm. name is Barbara Hayward. And, you know, she, you know, in-laws are always a thing, right? You, <laughs> when you get married, you're not really sure, like, how we're gonna blend this family. But from yeah. day one, she became my mom. Wow. She has loved on me and she also was a young widow. Her husband and my husband died from the very same rare lung disease 20 years apart. They both were in their 30s. Wow. And so when my husband died, I, she, she grabbed me and she held me. I call her my Naomi mm -hmm. and she is my Ruth. You know, she really has walked me through life and I am so thankful for her. Another person is my father. Um, most, of the, the, most of the time you hear of people being raised by single mothers. I was raised by a single father. Oh, wow. My father raised me from the time I was an infant. And my mother was around while she was um, living. But my father, it was just he and I growing up. And mm -hmm. he taught me about grit. He taught me about life, you know, will provide hits. They're going to happen. But what do you do after that? You dust yourself off, you trust God, and you pivot, you move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, he always, even today, he is um, everything to me and to my sons. Um, since my husband has been gone, he has been our rock. So he is just one of those people that I will, I mean, he's my dad, so it's <laughs> nice love, right? Yeah. But I will forever love him. Um, another person that truly has helped me um, in this season actually is AJ <laughs> oh, <laughs> from right. Awesome God Radio. You yeah. know, it's not often that you meet people that see something in you that you may not see in yourself and provide opportunities for you to grow, for you to evolve, mm -hmm. for you to kind of step into what God is calling you to do. And whatever it is that God puts on my heart, he's right there to support. But also he provides that challenge of well, why don't you try this? Or why don't you do this? Or let's, here's this opportunity. I think you should look here. And you know, there are many times I'm like, oh yeah, let's do it. And then there are times that I'm like, 
I don't know, know but <laughs> are you sure, you know, me, did you call me by mistake or, yeah. but again, going back to what I said earlier, God is really calling me to step into who he's called me to be and to shed myself of what I think I am mm -hmm. because I'm wrong. <laughs> and so AJ is a person much like my father and my mother-in-law that really helps to push me into my destiny. And so I'm thankful for people that love me enough to not allow me to stay where I am. Right. Wow. But to move forward. That's good. That's real good. Listen, what's one of your favorite scriptures? Oh, so I love the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite scripture is Romans 8, 28. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I, I just love the word. I love Romans. First yeah. of all, it's one of my favorite books of the Bible. But just knowing that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, right. there's something about that. Just knowing that regardless of what I see with my natural eyes, regardless of what's going on in my life or around my life, it will work for my good because yeah. I love him and because I'm called according to his purpose. To me, what an honor it is to be called by God. You know, and I don't take that lightly. Another scripture that's been heavy on my heart, it's also in Romans, um, is um, Romans 8, 5 and 6. And it just says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. Mm -hmm. The mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Yeah. Whatever we are thinking controls the narrative of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so really being covered and clothed in the word, but also having our mind, having a sound mind yeah. <laughs> and like checking our thoughts. Is this a thought from you, God, or is this a thought from someplace else? Yeah. And just allowing the Holy Spirit to govern our thoughts. Those are the two scriptures that I reference a lot. Wow. Yeah. E even that first uh, verse, there yeah. is therefore now no condemnation. Yes, for those that are in Christ Jesus. I was just talking yeah. about that verse with someone. <laughs> and I said, I used to always say, I would paraphrase and just say, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And I remember someone correcting me and they said, you missed a very important word. The word is there is now no <laughs> condemnation. That means something has changed. There was condemnation. Yeah. But now that we are in Christ Jesus, there's a shift that's taken place. And so it's just, Romans yeah. 8 is my favorite chapter in the uh, Bible. There's so much there <laughs> yeah. um, to just take on. And so I find myself reading it often and meditating on it often because mm -hmm. I need it. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Who's one of your favorite Bible uh, personalities? Oh, I love Gideon. Ah. And Gideon is a lot like me. <laughs> okay. You know, Gideon was given an assignment that seemed impossible. And he kept asking God for signs that it was him. And that is me at my core. <laughs> I just want to be sure that, Lord, are you sure you want me to do this? Can you just give me a sign that I'm supposed to sing this song or I'm supposed to do this thing? Um, it's nothing wrong with questioning God. Mm -hmm. He is the only person that has the answers. True. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm going to question, why not question God? But I love Gideon because even though he may have been nervous, and even though he had a lot of questions and he needed a lot of signs, he's kind of needy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He did get to the work. And he is somebody that I, um, I read that um, passage of scripture often. Another person I think of is Ruth. Um, Ruth, obviously, because she was a widow, there's a natural connection there. Mm -hmm. But um, it was her willingness to continue to move forward. You know, if you think of the beginning of Ruth, you know, Naomi basically says to her and to Orpah, like, hey, I'm not going to have any more kids, so y'all should go back to your home, mm -hmm. you know, go back to your families, right. and maybe you can meet someone there. And, you know, Ruth says, where you go, I go. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to go. She was willing to put the work in. She wasn't sitting just waiting for God to answer her prayers. She was willing to glean in the fields. She was willing to humble herself and to do whatever God called. And I find myself you know, gleaning in my own fields of God, you know, you may, it may not make sense to me now what you're asking, mm -hmm. but if this is what you're telling me to do, when have you ever failed me? So I'm just going to do what you said. Good. And so I often, wow. you know, just channel that and sometimes read it over and over, like, give me the posture of Ruth. Wow. That she just says yes and does. Because mm -hmm. many of us say yes, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. But that yes requires some action afterwards. And I just always admired how she did it, not even knowing where she was going. It's not like she knew the plan. Right. She just did the next thing he said. And it reminds me of um, a specific word God has given me recently. 
you know, I have children, I have teenage boys, and I'm always thinking about what's next for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm always praying about God, what's next and what's happening and things, you know, a few years ago, I was so sure of what my life was going to look like. And now nothing looks familiar. I don't uh -huh. even know what I'm working towards. And God gave me this word. He said, you know, your life is like a connect the dot picture. Mm -hmm. So you remember as kids, we had those connect the dot pictures oh, yeah. and you connect them and then you see what the picture is and then you color it. And what God said to me is you're trying to color the picture without connecting the dots. Mm. And the reason why is because you don't believe there's a picture there. Wow. So when we first see the connect the dot picture, it just looks like some dots. There's no form, there's no shape. It's not until we connect them that we see, oh, it's really a frog, <laughs> right? But it was a right. frog in the beginning. Yeah. It didn't become a frog after it was already a frog. We just didn't see it. And right. God had to show me, that's my life. Mm -hmm. My life is already beautiful. It's mm -hmm. already whole, it's already complete. I just can't see how all the things are shaping, but God has already designed it. And the only thing that I need to do is connect the next dot. Mm -hmm. Just do the next thing that God says. Yeah. And then from there, he will, he will kind of move me to where I need to be and the picture will continue to form. But I can't draw my own. I have to just connect the next dot. And when I think about Ruth, that's exactly what she did. If you like this video, push that like button and make sure you subscribe to the Bishop Leonard Scott Ministries YouTube channel. Somebody